الذي نحمده ونستهدفه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يؤمن فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اصله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد ان اقول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد صدق الله رسوله الرؤيا بالحق لتدخلن المسجد الحرام ان شاء الله امنين محلقين ومسكن ومقصرين لا تخافون فعلم ما لم تعلموا وجعل من دون ذلك فتحا قريبا هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وبشكل صبري ويسر امري واحمل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي والله فتقدنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصلوا بالحق وتواصلوا بالصبر امين يا رب العالمين. On this beautiful occasion of Eid, we're often reminded that this Eid is a celebration of the legacy and the sacrifices made by Ibrahim alayhi salam. But today I want to add something to that conversation. Our Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, his primary objective, his role, was to restore the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was, his job was to clean up the house that Ibrahim alayhi salam built. His job was to restore the worship of Allah on the religion and the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Which is why when Allah gave him the promise that the, the Kaaba would be restored, that is actually called al fatih That's the ultimate victory when that, that house that was originally made by Ibrahim alayhi salam, so only, people only worship Allah, is going to be brought back to its original purpose. But when we celebrate the Hajj, which is actually what we're doing across the Ummah, we're actually celebrating this ceremony of Hajj, all of which is tied to the sacrifices of Ibrahim alayhi salam. At the same time, we are also celebrating the sacrifices made by the Prophet sallam, and his companions. And I want to bring attention to that. Yes, Ibrahim alayhi salam, every one of the rituals that we do is tied to one of the sacrifices that Ibrahim alayhi salam had to make. Everything from running between Safa and Marwa is the sacrifice of his family. Doing the Tawaf and building the Kaaba is after he passed all of his tests. Sacrificing the animal goes back to his, you know, Allah instructing him through the dream to sacrifice Ismail alayhi salam. So everything goes back to Ibrahim alayhi salam in one way or the other. But in addition to all of that, in these few moments, I want you to appreciate something. Our Messenger وسلم, was given a dream. Just like Ibrahim alayhi salam was given a dream. He was given a dream right after, soon after, the Muslims were almost all killed. In Medina, we were surrounded by every group that could align themselves with the Meccans, and they wanted to kill all the Muslims inside the city of Medina once and for all. It was going to be a genocide. This was not going to be a war. A war happens on the battlefield. This was going to happen inside the city, in civilian territory. So men, women, and children were going to be killed. And the only thing that prevented that from happening, that from happening was a trench that was dug. This is the battle of al -Ahzab. The trench that was dug that kept the enemy from coming into the city, and then Allah sent an invisible army of angels to uproot them. And they, they, they weren't able to be successful. But you have to appreciate something. The people of Mecca were not just interested in fighting the Muslims now on the battlefield, they were so thirsty for the blood of those who Allah, of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for everybody around him, they left their home, they spent money, they sacrificed, they made a lot of alignments and a lot of allegiances and then they came together all the way here to the house of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to try to eliminate, to finish the problem of Islam. When they were unsuccessful, after they left, now we know how powerful they are because they can gather everybody and they can come after us. It is after they left, the Prophet saw a dream, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he's going to go to do hajj. That he's going to go to do hajj. And when you go to do hajj, you're not supposed to go with weapons. You don't go for fighting, you go peacefully. Aminin, as the Quran itself describes. 
So the Prophet sees a dream that we're all going to go make Hajj, as if you're going to go walk in peacefully into Makkah when the enemy is thirsty for your blood. And some narrations say 1800, some say more companions of the Messenger, may Allah be pleased with them. They all said if the Prophet saw a dream, it must be true. So they all agreed to go. And they go on their way to make Hajj to the enemy that wants to kill them. Kaaba is not a safe place to go, it's not like it is today. You don't just walk in and start praying. And so as they are going, the spies of the Makkans, they get word to the people, the, the, you know, they, they send word back to Makkah that they're coming. So they are now getting ready to kill the Muslims on the road. Not even when they get to Makkah, on the road. And the Prophet ﷺ had to take a different road so that they could, he could avoid being slaughtered, really the Muslims would end up being slaughtered because they have no weapons. They just came with their animals to sacrifice. So they go from a road that is never used by human beings, actually. And when they go through this road, many of you know, they ended up in the field of Hudaybiyah. But I want you to know, when they walked on this road, the, the rock was so hot that it melted their shoes. And the rock was so jagged that many of them, their clothes were turning red from blood, from scrapes. And they were doing this all the way to fulfill the dream of the Prophet and they make it to Hudaybiyah, and at Hudaybiyah, the Meccans try to send assassins, 80 of them, to try to kill the Messenger again, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is right before they got in. And even then, the Messenger of Allah was able to, you know, uh, uh, make, their success, make their attempt unsuccessful, he disarmed them, and sent them back. And now the negotiations started happening. But I'm not here to tell you about Hudaybiyah. I want to tell you something else. When finally they got there, and they were, the, the, the long and the short of it is, they were not allowed to make Hajj. They were not allowed to make Hajj. They walked there, risking their life, with the Messenger, all these companions, with their animals. And I, I want you to understand, some of those animals are their life savings. That's all they have. They don't have anything else. Some of them don't even have a house, they just have an animal. And they bring that animal to slaughter because they're coming for Hajj. And now, the Messenger tells them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we're not going to do Hajj this year, we're going back home. But wait, we're not just going back home, we're going to slaughter the animal, and we're going to send the meat to Mecca. We're going to send the meat, because they, the meat is supposed to be distributed there. They can't take the meat back. This is the first celebration of the Eid, can you imagine? You know, when we sacrificed the animal, the first time it was done, we didn't even get to eat the food. The enemy ate the food. They were so angry, one of the animals that was caught was the camel of Abu Jahan from Badr. Abu Jahan's camel was caught in Badr. You know what, the, the Muslims were so angry, but they were passive aggressive. They cut off its head, put it on a tray, and sent that in first. Because they wanted to send a message. We're not happy about this. But the idea was all of the Muslims were upset. Every companion was upset. Every one of them. And those of you that have studied this, this in this event in the life of the Prophet you know that even the Sahaba that were always calm couldn't keep calm. And even when Abu Bakr when Umar bin Khattab raised his voice to the Prophet Abu Bakr didn't stop him. Not immediately. Even he didn't stop him. When the Prophet said, we're going to sh you know, shave our heads, we're going to sacrifice the animals and shave our heads. All of the companions that were listening about whom Allah says, Sami'na wa ata'na, we hear and we obey. None of them obey. None of them. Not one of them listened. And the Prophet said, this is the first time it's happened in his life. And he says something to his companions that are willing to risk their life for him, and they're not listening to him. It's the first time that happened. This is the event of the first Eid. <laughs> this is actually what we're celebrating. The Prophet of Allah finally, on the instruction of our mother, does the sacrifice, shaves his head, and they follow in suit. But everybody's upset. Everybody's upset. And the reason I brought this up is Eid is a time of celebration. We're supposed to be happy at this time. But when you, when you remember this incident, no happy memories come to mind. It's a pretty stressful event. But Allah changes our way of thinking. Allah revealed in the Quran that they were heading back. Unsuccessful, not being able to make Hajj. Unsuccessful. How? There, some of them were even questioning. I thought the Prophet saw dreams of Allah and Allah. Why did we do Hajj? The dream is supposed to be revelation from Allah. Then why did it happen? 
And even all the people come up, actually ask the messenger, what the Allah will do, why not? And he said, I never said this year. But he did, you could have asked the follow-up question, if it's not this year, what are we doing here? Why don't we come here next year? But this was part of the test. And when they head back, Allah revealed Surah the fatih all of it. And when Umar saw the Prophet's face, I want you to remember this. When he saw the Prophet's face, after the surah had come down, he doesn't know the surah has come down. He looks at him and he says, I have never seen his face more lit up. I have never seen his face happier than that moment. This is what Roman Sattah sees. Why? Because in an incident, in an event where it was so depressing, and it was defeat, and it was humiliation, and it was a waste of time, money, resources. We risked everything, and we got nothing. The only thing we got out of that was Quran. Quran came. Surah Al-Fatih came. And this surah came, and it was enough to make the Prophet Sallallahu happy. And this surah, this event, if you study it from a historical point of view, you will say this is not a victory. But the Quran says, We've given you a clear victory, an open victory. I want you to appreciate the emotional side of this. Some of the people who came to Hajj used to live in Mecca. That was their home. Now they, they were kicked out of their home. And now they're coming back for the first time after many years. They're coming close to their home. And they have these feelings. Like this is where their childhood was. This is where they were raised. This is where their family is. And now they, have, they can't go and they have to go back again. And all of that will mess with your heart, your feelings. You'll have anger, sadness, depression, frustration, confusion, all of those anxiety, all of those feelings will overwhelm you. What is the gift that Allah gave believers? That Allah calls the ultimate victory in the surah over and over again. He sent down calm, peace, tranquility, and He sent it deep into the hearts of those who believe. And deep into the hearts of believers. The reason I shared this story with you today on this occasion of Eid, and I told you it's going to be a brief khutbah, is because the greatest gift Allah gave the Ummah on that day was that He gave us the ability to find peace in ourselves because of the revelation of Quran. We will not have a stressful situation in our life that will compare to what they went through. We will never compare to what they went through. The kind of sacrifice they had to make, walking through that heat, we walk in the Texas heat for 10 minutes, we know what happens to us. We know what kind of headaches they get. They're walking in bad heat between Mecca and Medina. And there's no air conditioning. And they're doing it for the sake of Allah through a territory that's bleeding them on the way. And they're coming back. And yet, Allah made their hearts calm. Allah gave them calmness, sakina, people who will continue. As a matter of fact, later on, فَأَنْتَلَ السَّكِينَ تَعَلَيْهِمْ وَأَتَابَهُمْ فَتْحَلْ قَلِيبًا And he, he sent tranquility and peace onto them, and secondarily, he gave them victory too. Like the victory is less important, this was more important. This peace and tranquility was more important. So what I wanted to leave you with, what I want you to think about, is you and I, all of us, Allah created human beings in Kaaba. He created us in labor, stress, difficulty, pain. All of you have something in your life. All of you have some difficulty in your life. No human being was created without difficulty or without pain. And you know what? Any difficulty you have in life will be easy to deal with if your heart is at ease. If your heart is at ease. Sometimes people have all the money in the world, but the heart is not at ease. Sometimes they have everything on the outside that looks good. The clothes look good, the car looks good, the house looks good, everything looks good. But there's no peace inside. They're, they're stressed, they're sad, they're, there's a hole inside that can't be filled. Allah gave us something that no money can fill, no parties can fill, no clothes can fill, no food can fill. You know, when people get stressed out, they do stress eating, people do stress shopping, you know, people do stress buying, people take stress vacations, and the, the, the hole doesn't get filled. And Allah gave us something in this most stressful occasion. Allah turned that into a celebration until the Day of Judgment. Why? Because we can find peace and tranquility in the Word of Allah. When you come to the word of Allah seeking calm, when you come to the word of Allah, just whoever truly believes in Allah, Allah guides his heart or her heart. May Allah is always make us of those who find peace and tranquility in our hearts from Allah's word. Give Allah's words a chance. The Quran is not just there for you and I to study tafsir and to study some ilm and to learn some information 
or to learn the Arabic language. The plan, one of its goals is to actually calm our heart down, to calibrate our hearts so that we can deal with everything in life. Everything will become easy to deal with when that sakina is there. And that sakina does not come except from the sky. Anzal as sakina. Anzal as sakina. When he has sakina. That is actually the sakina. So that is, that is what we need. That is you. We are in desperate need of finding some calm and some peace in our hearts. May Allah Azza wa help us find that peace in our hearts. Last quick bit of advice for Eid. I can't help myself but say it before I go. Eid is a time where a lot of families get together, which also means a lot of fighting happens. So be mindful of that. Shaitan wants to turn a celebration of Ibadah into a celebration of his victory. And the way that will happen is when you see your uncle, your cousin, or whoever, somebody's going to make a comment, it's going to turn into a thing. We're not inviting them anymore next week. Forget about them, this and that. Fight that temptation. Use kind words with each other. You know, you're already thinking of who you're not calling today, or whose text message you're not responding to. So try to fight that feeling, and be, be, have, have calmness in your heart, and become a source of calmness for others. Have that sakina in you, and give that sakina off to others. This is one of the things we should take away with us on the celebration of Eid. It's not just about giving gifts and receiving gifts and giving each other hugs, but really of hearts to come together, hearts to find peace with each other. May Allah Azza wa Jal soften our hearts towards one another. It's no surprise that it's the same surah that says, Wahamat Bainahum. Right? They're merciful and loving towards one another. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us loving, respectful, and courteous towards one another and make this Eid a celebration and a, and a blessing by which our families get together. And the ill feelings we have towards one another are evaporated.